Welcome to my corner. Woo! Welcome to my corner. Let's have a talk now. Uh-huh. From Miami to California. Yeah. Check your girl out. I'm gonna give it to you straight up. That's right. That's right. Keeping it real. No things inside. Let's go. Welcome to my corner, y'all. Okay, so let's get right into it. This is going to be one of the most transparent videos I ever make. Um, it's going to be healing for me. Maybe I hope it helps somebody else for you. But, you know, all right, cool. So we all know that I work with college kids. I love working with college students. It's so amazing. Um, it's kind of like I get to pay it forward. I get to <laughs> relive my own college years at the same time. And I just get to, I get to impact the future. And I love it. Um, so... It's May, which means it's graduation time, which means my seniors are like coming in my office like, Candace, what am I gonna do with my life? You know? And uh, I've been trying to, well, I've been telling them the story of like me after college. And um, um, I figured it was time that I shared it with y'all. Um, I remember I told y'all when I first started, I was gonna tell y'all my journey with suicide and depression and uh, all these different things. Um, so let's run it. Okay, so 2013 was the year I was, I was graduating. Um, when 2013 kicked off, I had taken ales from the time January started to the time it ended. I had taken ales, okay? Um, first thing is at first. So January hit. Um, I used to sing in this group, like, back in school. Like, we was lit. Hey, kill them. We was opening up for Mary Mary and stuff. Like, I thought I was going to be a star. All right? I got the boot out the group. <laughs> and I wasn't sad that I got kicked out the group. I was more sad that I lost my friends. Um, I was very close with these people. Um... Like, they were, like, gonna be in my wedding, and, like, they was gonna be, like, aunts to my kids, like, lifetime friends, and so, it ended. So, like, I had to learn how to move on from, like, all these years of friendship and learn how to, like, be myself and be by myself and be okay with being myself. So, I had lost my friends, so I was very sad about losing my friends. Um, after I had lost my friends, I had lost an internship that I, I, my life... I wanted to work for CNN. Don't you get it? I wanted to be a news anchor. I lost that, okay? So here I am at graduation day. Um, I'm getting ready to lose all of the comfort that I've ever known for the past four years. And I'm about to embark in this journey of adulthood. I don't know what's planned. I don't know what's going on because my plans have failed. So my mom told me, all right, Candace, if you don't have a plan by May 18, 2013, when you finish your graduation day, we're going to let you have a little celebration, but you're going to get in the car with us and you're going to come home to Florida. What, bro? The worst thing in the world is coming from all your freedom, living your best life to being in your mama and daddy's house. Like, bro, like you go from not having, <laughs> from having freedom to not having freedom to checking in. Like you can't have people in and out of your house. You got to go to church on Sundays. And like, I got to sing when I don't want to sing. Like, it was just like, oh, why? So, you know, now I'm like, bro, send me back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would love to be living rent-free in their house, drinking their water, running up their lights and their cable. You know what I'm saying? But I digress. So, um, the day after my graduation is over, I said bye to my friends. I got in the car and I moved. Um, and so we went to Tennessee for vacation. And while I was on the vacation, it was cool. Everything was cool, right? Reality didn't set in until I got to Florida. The day I got to Florida, I fell into the sunken place, Okay. I realized that the control freak could not control anything. I had no plans. I had no car. I had no money. Um, what should have been six months of relaxation and enjoying being childish before I became an adult was the most depressing part of my life. The time, those six months were the hardest six months of my life because I didn't know if I was going to actually live. Like, I, I didn't know because my headspace was so jacked up. So the first thing I've been telling my students is like, yo, you got time? You ain't got to have it all together right now. And I know people are asking you, like, what are you going to do? What do you, you don't know. But that's okay not to know because you got time to figure it out. The second thing I've been telling them is to be very careful of your headspace. I, I want y'all to understand depression is so sneaky. That thing will creep up in there and it will sit with you and you don't even know you're depressed. And then next thing you know, you want to blow your whole brains out. Trust me, I know. And, you know, I, you know, black people won't believe in going to counselors. We'd be like, we're just going to pray about it and move on. Okay, you could pray about it and talk to Jesus, but you should, you still should go get some therapy, get some help, bro. Get some, get some help. See a counselor. Um, so while I was home for six months, um, my parents can tell you this. I locked myself in my room, okay? Every day I would wake up. And I would be like, yo, why did you let me live today, Lord? Like, normal people wake up and be like, thank God for a new day. I was like, again? 
I woke up again, bro. Like for real, like you didn't want to take me out today. That's how bad I was. So um, I remember um, my parents, I could tell my parents are kind of concerned about me because like my dad would say like, you want to go somewhere? I'd be like, nah, I'm straight. And I would go in my room. I would eat and go in my room. I would close my door. I would go in my room. The only time you would see me is if like I was getting ready to go to for church and like I was singing songs to the Lord out of the most broken place. Like I was just so broken and I was just so, I was so messed up. But like I was singing and I was, you know, I was serving in church, but I was, I was hurt, which is why I tell people all the time, like you gotta be careful of, you know, pay attention to church members, pay attention to people. So many people are in there hurting, they're dealing with real things. So I remember, um, my, my parents were concerned, my mom, but you know, they would, they would pray for me. So I remember one day, um, my dad was like, okay, hey, I, I found this job for you. And you know, they pay you $18 an hour. Plus you make whatever you make in sales. So you can make $3,000 a paycheck. You can buy your own car. You can get out of here. I'm like, yes, whatever gets me out. Mistake number three, which I, which I keep telling my students, don't you do anything that does not push you to purpose. Okay. I know you need money. I know, but, but, but but get jobs on purpose okay do things that are going to push your purpose i'm 26 and i just now figured out that things are leading to purpose you know what i'm saying i was just doing whatever because i needed money but it's great to have money but if you're not living your purpose it doesn't matter so um my dad was like you can sell insurance all right so the thing was i had to pass this insurance test right i had to pass it with a 70. y'all i took it four times and i got a 68 so at this point i'm like dog i'm dumb i'm jobless i ain't got no man life is falling apart woe is me okay so i remember one day after uh the insurance class i got in the car and i sobbed and i don't cry like i don't think people understand i'm not a crying person like the most you'll see me cry is at church, but I, I, I cried for six months straight, okay? I cried, and I got in the car, and I was sobbing. And my dad said, uh, what going on? Like, he thought somebody had harmed me. He thought something was wrong. He was like, Candace, tell me what's wrong. I was like, how do I do this? Like, this isn't what I planned for my life. Like, I hate my life. And he was like, oh. <laughs> like, he didn't know what to do. My dad has, my dad uh, really knew. My dad and I are the same. We kind of suck in the like, when people start crying, we don't know what to do. We just be like, oh, fix it, Jesus. Oh, so I got home and I was still crying. And my mom was like, what's wrong with her? And my dad was like, this, she says she, this ain't what she want to do with her life. And so my mom was like, Candace, do you want to go to therapy? Do you want to go to counseling? I was like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. She said, you don't have to be crazy to go to counseling, Candace. Like, do you need, do you need it? I think she was concerned for me because I was concerned for myself. So... I remember I wrote this letter to God and I told God, look, I can't take no more. Who my eyeballs? I can't take no more. I said, so you gonna have to fix something or I'm not gonna be able to live here. So the next day, bro, I was driving my parents' car and I got into this like fender bender and I was so mad. Like my dad was happy I was okay. My dad was like, that's what we got insurance for. It's no big deal, Candace. Like, don't worry about it. I was mad, but because the Lord didn't take me out. I was like, really, Jesus? Like, you didn't want me to hit a tree and die like everybody else? Like, I just had to live. I Like, I was I was in this dark place. And, like, you know, the only reason I didn't kill myself was because I didn't have any utensils. And I didn't want to go to hell. Like, I just, I, like, you know, I was taught that murder was a sin. And, you know, I was like, I can't kill myself. So, if you take me out, Lord, I can go to heaven. So, I remember I prayed, like, God, can you just kill me here? Like, I just want to die. Whew! And I remember I was just like, I don't want to live no more. Like, yo, like life ain't cool. Like it sucks. Like, you know, like this is not what I want. This is, you know, like take me out, bro. Like kill me. Um, I'm so glad he didn't kill me. Who Lord. Um, and so I remember after I got my car accident, I called my best friend. I was just like, yo, man, I really want to die today. She was just like, understood. Like me and her were going through the same thing. So she understood. I was like, I don't want to be here. Like life would be a lot better without me. Um, I was, I was, it, I was in the darkest place of my life. I've ne I, 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 uh, I don't even know how to put it in words. I was just, it was dark. I didn't know, I didn't know if I was gonna make it. I, I didn't know, I was, I was scared of my own self, honestly. So I've been telling my students like, yo, check on your friends, check on their headspace, like check on your own self, like go to therapy, uh, let someone know that you're not okay because depression after graduation is real. Everything about it is going to change. So um, you need to make sure that you're stable, that you don't do something you'll regret. Um, which brings me to my parents, not my parents, but parents like, yo, shut up, okay? Like, we know we just graduated. We know we ain't got no plan. I don't need you in my ear every day saying something like, so when you gonna get a job? When you gonna do this? I don't know, can you shut up? Like, I really, like parents, I love y'all. And that's not to my parents, but just in general. Um, 
You have to be careful, okay? If you have students that's about to graduate and be careful because they're about to go into this thing of the unknown, okay? We've been living in this fairy tale world for real, but for, you know, and we're about to go into the unknown. I don't, we don't need your mouth on top of the unknown factor, okay? Just, just, just learn to be there for them and cover them and like pray for them and, you know, help them out every now and then. Um, we know y'all don't want us at your house. We don't want to be there. Like, I want y'all to understand. Shadi don't want to be there. We don't want to be in your house following your rules, listening to you nag. We don't want to do that. We have had so much. For, we don't want to see you like that, bro. We love y'all, but no. And so after um, after uh, the whole little car accident thing, I had applied for this job at Macy's because at this point I needed some money. Like I was like, yo, I need money because I'm trying to get up out of here. I cannot stay with my parents no more. And don't get me wrong. My parents weren't even doing anything to me. It was a fact that I was in their house and I wasn't living my own life. And you know, it was just bad. So I remember I got this job with Macy's and um, I remember, or I began to learn that I had equated happiness with things. Um, my happiness was found in my friends and then they left and so I, I didn't know what to do. My happiness was found in singing in this group and that group was over and I didn't know what to do. My happiness was in the fact that I was gonna be somebody, I was gonna be great, in my, but then the career thing fell through. And then like I, ha I had equated happiness with things, right? So I was working at Macy's, I was getting paid every Friday, you know, a little chump change. I remember I would get in my car <laughs> after working at Macy's and I would just cry and be like, why the freak am I here? Like, why? Like I was having a whoa me moment. And so I remember I applied for this company um, and this was how I got to New Orleans. I had told myself in college, if I don't get a job at a college, I'm gonna go work for them because I know they'll pay me salary and health benefits or whatever. So um, I had got the job and I was moving to New Orleans. So at this point I'm happy because I'm thinking like, yes, life's turning around for me. Like, but I was still equating happiness with things. I was still equating joy with things. So little did I know that the thing I had prayed for was great, but it was only gonna, it was, the depression was only gonna get worse and I didn't know, but this time I was gonna go through it alone. So I moved to New Orleans and I'm happy and I'm excited. And I remember my parents leaving and I was like, this is for real. Like, I'm really about to be a whole adult. Now, mind you, in the last six months, I was depressed. So I was just happy to move on. And so when I got the job, I was excited because I thought this was gonna help me. I was not gonna be sad anymore. I wasn't gonna wanna kill myself. Man, that was a lie. Now I'm lonely by myself in this new city with no friends. My parents aren't here to check on me. So now I'm in an even darker place. Um, and it was scary. Um, and I remember I moved to New Orleans. I had no friends. Um, I was going to like a Caucasian church, which was nothing wrong with, but it just wasn't for me. So I remember my best friend, shout out to her. Like my best friend through this whole time was a rock because we were in similar places. Like we were suicide buddies. Um, literally she was going through depression the same time I was. And I'm gonna let her tell you her story one day in my corner. Maybe we'll like do a little, but she was going through it. And so I remember I got to New Orleans and I would call her every day before work and I would just cry and I'd be like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know why I'm here. Like, I don't, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Like I thought moving to New Orleans would make me happy. And I thought that moving here would, you know, be all these different things. And I, you know, but, but, um, uh, I'm not happy. I'm not happy and I'm sad. So I would go home every two months. Okay. I lived in New Orleans and I was home in February. I went home again. I went to North Carolina. I just needed, I needed to be back in a comforting place because I had equated my happiness with this comfort of comfortability. Like the, the, the unknown is very scary, um, which is what I've been telling my college students. Not knowing is very scary, but it also can be very beautiful because if you tap into the right places and if your mind is focused on, you know, God and you're, you, you begin to see that not knowing is a beautiful thing because not knowing means, means he knows. Um, and so, um, I just was like, you know, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know. Like, and I, I, now mind you, at this point, I still have no gun to shoot myself. I got some pills though, you know what I'm saying? So I could pop a few pills, but even then I figured God would save me because I was just like, clearly I'm supposed to be here. So ain't no point in me taking myself out. Um, so to be honest, you guys, I didn't uh, finally get over this whole depression thing till I was like 24. But yeah, I'm 26. So uh, I was depressed for like three years. It was, it was easy to hide my depression because I am me. I'm loud. I'm funny. But even the strongest people need to be checked on. Even the strongest people in the silence is when it gets scary. Um, I'm 26 now. Um, 
you know, depression and I, uh, we don't really talk no more like that. Um, I do have moments where, uh, no, I don't have any moments. Like, I haven't recently. After I turned 25, like, a light bulb just went off. And it was like, girl, get yourself together. And so, um, I do have these moments, though, where I'm really, really quiet. Um, and my best friend knows, like, when she doesn't hear from me for two weeks, she knows that it's time to check my headspace. She'd be like, yo, how's your head? I'd be like, um, I'm okay. Um, but I really don't be okay. She'd be like, yo, what's really going on? And I tell her what's going on in my headspace and we check each other. Um, I, I kind of still think I should go to therapy. Like, I feel like it would be good for me. Like, black people need therapists too. Um, and now I'm learning, or I, like, I have learned through all this depression and suicide that, you know, life is beautiful. It's something that can't be placed into words. The unknown, you, you don't know what's going to happen, but that's the beautiful part. And you have time. And you have to be careful of your headspace. And you want to make sure you're working, walking into purpose. You don't have to have the answers today. Like, be clear. I know you think you do, but you don't. You don't have to have the answers of how life is going to happen today. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Like I said, I'm 26, right? And y'all, I'm in the most beautiful place of my life. Like, I really am. I've never felt so much peace in my life. I've never been so happy in my life. I've never had so much joy in my life. Like... I'm so glad I chose life and I'm so glad life chose me because I don't think I was supposed to be here. Um, if, 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 if we would have went according to my plan, uh, my mom would have been burying me. Like, and I couldn't imagine who I couldn't imagine um, my parents burying me. And I'm so glad that I chose life and I'm so glad I went through this because I think there's a lot of people out there who are going through this depression. They're going through suicide. Check on your friends, bro. Check on them. Check on your kids. Check on their headspace. Check on them. Even the strongest people, even the people who have the most faith in God, doubt. Even the people who, I'm a whole pastor's kid, bro. I'm not supposed to battle depression. I'm not supposed to be suicidal. I'm supposed to be the one with the word. And I do have the word in my heart. But for a moment, I forgot who I was. For a moment, I got so caught up in how it looked that I did. I forgot that, you know, my Savior walks on water. So a storm ain't nothing. You did. Um, so now, I'm 26, y'all. I'm so happy. And I don't even have half of the things that I desire but that's beautiful because I know if I don't have it yet that means God isn't God can still make it happen um I don't have the answers I really don't but I really hope that me telling my story will help someone I really hope that you understand that college students you'll protect your peace protect your headspace um you have time to figure it out um life this adult this adult journey okay adulting sucks okay it does but it's a beautiful thing I know you have plans. I know you have purpose. Look, but let me tell you one thing and one thing only. Don't you dare get out here and chase your dreams. Chase God, not the dream, okay? I'm going to put it on a shirt so don't y'all be stealing because y'all steal everything from me. Chase God, not the dream. When you're chasing God, right? I'm 26 and I just figured this out, okay? When you're chasing God, right? All the things that you desire come. But when you chase the dream, right? You go, you get tired, you are broken. You are worn out. Anything that you get that's not God's will, you got to sustain it yourself, okay? And so you get tired. You're like, you're frustrated. When is me? When am I going to get married? When are doors going to open for me? When? That's because you're chasing the dream. But if you chase God, it's more like, you know what? Cool. So, Lord, you let me know what door you want to open and when it opens. And, you know, when he opens the door, the dream and then some comes together. Um, I don't know. You know what's planned for you i don't i don't know but i know one thing please choose life man um i i still think i should go to therapy i kind of need a therapist but i don't want to pay for it right now like, if it's free sure but if it's a medical bill that's dead i'll keep talking to jesus and journaling um find a safe space for you um for me my corner is my safe space i don't think a lot of people know that but for me me talking to y'all is safety it, i'm literally talking to myself but still it's a safe space find your safe space and um check on your headspace and check on your friends and stop rushing stop stop rushing slow down take a minute breathe you got time bro you have time and you're not late and you're not early and doors are going to open for you and things are going to happen and you you all the things that you desire are going to happen but first chase god not the dream okay so i really hope this helps man i really hope I hope my story helps y'all i'm starting to realize that i didn't really go through things for myself but for other people like you know, and I would say for y'all to slide in my DMs if you're dealing with depression, but I suck at, um, I'm not the best, uh, no. Um, so I think y'all should get some therapists. I think y'all should get some safe, like get you a girls group, a safe, like get you something, but, but check, but be, be all right. All right. So we're going to be back in the corner with a movie review on the Avengers. 
and I love y'all so much and um, let's come sit back in the corner, okay?